Hi there. Welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie, episode 215. I am Julie DiMatteo, the Paper Pixie, and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in the U.S., and I'm coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. The date today is Wednesday, October 27th. I'm live every Wednesday if you're new here, and I demonstrate one or two projects from start to finish, so we'll have fun doing that together tonight. It is Halloween week here in the U.S., so happy Halloween to those of you that celebrate. I had to put on some kitty cat ears for tonight, so welcome, welcome. Let me say hello to a few of you folks while you're rolling in. Hi, Christine, Cynthia, Wilma, all the way from Holland. Welcome. Hi, Angela, Mary, Ava, Joe, Crystal, Angie. Awesome. You guys are so... Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for my kitty ear comment, Jackie. <laughs> oh, you guys are awesome. Um, the kids are excited for Halloween. They are, Nolan's going to be a police officer and Lily is going to be a Scarlet Enchantress. That was the name of the costume. We visited Spirit Halloween for the first time. I've never been to one. Those are those pop-up Halloween stores. And we went a week or two ago and it was kind of funny because everywhere we turned, Nolan was like, Ooh, what's that? <laughs> some spooky things in there and some hilarious costumes. So thank you. Thank you. Um, we're going to start Halloween a little early, at least in our neighborhood, because it's a school night. It falls on a Sunday. So um, we skipped Halloween last year. So the kids are extra excited this year. I do have a couple of show and tell items to share with you. They picked two things to show you. And let me do a couple of housekeeping items really quickly. We're coming to the end of October, but my monthly host code for this month is QJ4BZXCA, um, and orders of $50 or more will get to choose one of the following three free gifts, some fun gifts, the Amaryllis Bloom stamp set, the soft pastels assortment, and the silver and clear epoxy essentials. So if you have ordered $50 or more with me this month and you haven't chosen your free gift, look out for that email from me so I can get you some fun happy mail. If you don't already have a demonstrator, you can request current copies of our copies of our current catalogs. Wow. At the paperpixie.com slash happy mail. I'd love to be your demonstrator. And I think that's the scoop. We will have a new um, sort of sweet collection of products that drop, I believe it's next Tuesday, November 2nd. So stay tuned for that. We're probably, I'm probably going to be doing projects from that suite. Uh, next Wednesday. So let me go ahead and flip the camera here. This is the project we're making tonight. I want to, um, I cannot remember the name. Somebody requested the note card size of my card box. I have an A2 card box on my blog and in my YouTube channel. This is sized for our note cards. Those are the three and a half by five note cards. From Stampin' Up, the note cards and envelopes come in a set of 20. You get 20 note cards and 20 envelopes. Love those things. But here is a quick sneak peek, and then I'll jump into show and tell for the kids. It's a great double, or like a reinforced edge gift box. And on the inside, believe it or not, I have 10 cards. 10 cards and 10 envelopes. Now, I didn't dress up the envelopes, but you can absolutely do that. This is a perfect gift for the holidays or really any time of year. This would be a really cool gift if you were to create like monogrammed cards for a friend or loved one. Really simple card layout. These are all the same, but I'm going to show you a little trick with the, the angled cut on the designer series paper. And again, quick, easy cards. This would be a really great gift to give to someone who likes to give out Christmas cards for the holidays. So I'm going to show you both of those tonight. We won't make all 10 cards. I'll share how to make one of them. And then show and tell from the kids if this will stay together. Nolan picked a dinosaur 3D puzzle that he wanted to show you. How cool is that? That's a T-Rex, right? <laughs> he is dino obsessed. So everything dinos for him. But that's what he wanted to share with you. Nolan is six. And then Lily, my little artist, she's got a really cool, it's, I think it's an adult coloring book, but she um, colored this the other day and I love how she added the rainbow. Lily is eight. So my, my two creative kiddos, I love it. So, all right, let's jump into tonight's project. My husband, Brian, is watching for your questions. He'll pop those up on the screen for me so I can focus on teaching tonight's project to you. We are going to be using products from 
the Painted Christmas Suite. Now this is a mega suite. If you wanted everything in the collection, it's $141.25. But let me show you what all you get in this suite. There are two bundles, these beautiful gold holly leaves, the cherry cobbler and gold metallic ribbon, and then the painted Christmas 12 by 12 designer series paper. Now tonight we are primarily focused on the designer series paper, and I love this sentiment set. Christmas to remember. Now really any of these sentiments would work with this card. This one might be a little too tall for the gap, but you could adjust that really easily. But these are really fantastic sentiments for the holidays. Now this comes bundled with the, what are they called? This, the Christmas pine cone dies. Um, I've had questions from customers. The, the pairings of these seem a little bit different, right? So the um, Christmas pine cone dies go with the sentiment stamp set. And then the seasonal labels dies go with the Christmas season stamp set. So they look like they don't go together, but really these two bundles are complementary to each other. Apologies for the glare there on the set. But I absolutely love, if you're gonna, if you're gonna choose a couple things from the suite, I would definitely recommend just buying the stamp set separately and then these seasonal labels dies because these are going to go so well together. Now, again, these would all cut out the uh, Christmas season stamp set. So maybe you could do this bundle because you'll save 10% and then grab that sentiment set. Now the Christmas pinecone dies are awesome, but they're really big dies. So anyways, I'm finding I am using these two together quite a bit. So Christmas to remember, seasonal labels dies, then we've got the beautiful painted Christmas designer series paper. This is just classic Christmas colors with a little bit of, um, I think it's, which color is it? There's a blue in here, I thought. Soft sea foam is, is what's coming up. It's a little bit blue here. Um, really, really pretty. Classic designer series paper. And last I checked, none of this is backwards. So <laughs> that's always a good thing. So we're going to start with the box. And we've got two pieces here. We're gonna do a lid and a base. We're gonna start with the base. The base, I'm using real red cardstock, and this measures seven and three quarters by nine and one quarter. And this is real easy to score. We're gonna score at one inch and two inch on all four sides, so excuse me, on all four sides. So one inch and two inches, and then just continue to rotate around the remaining sides doing the same score lines, one inch and two inch. I love a double reinforced box. Perfect for giving gifts. All right, so that's that piece. I do have templates I'll share with you in just a moment. Now grabbing the other piece here, now this one, don't get mad at me for these measurements, but it's these measurements are so that the lid fits perfectly over the base. So these measure six and a little more than five sixteenths. So five sixteenths is one sixteenth more than six and a quarter. But then I push it just a little bit, kind of halfway to that next little tick mark. So six and five sixteenths plus, <laughs> and then seven and 13 sixteenths plus. Okay. So that is just one sixteenth past seven and three quarters. And again, just inch it a little bit past kind of in between the score lines. Now I'll give you a, t a quick tip because if you have the fabulous paper trimmer from Stampin' Up, let me just show you if I can, it's going to be kind of hard to see on the screen here, but the six and five sixteenths falls right in this little gray spot. So this is what I did. I kind of went past the hinge line. I don't know if you can see that hinge line there. See the hinge line? I went just past that and kind of halfway in the middle of the gray there. And that's close enough. Basically what we're trying to do is to make the inside section of the lid just enough bigger to fit over the box base. All right, so this one, the, the, me the scoring measurements are way easier. We're gonna score this at five eighths and one and a quarter on all four sides. I always find it's easier if you have crazier measurements for the starting piece, but then I try to make the, 
the scoring measurements much simpler for you. So five eighths and one and a quarter. Uh, yes, Amy, the A2, um, I have an A2 gift box and you can search for that on my blog at thepaperpixie.com. And I don't know if you guys know this, but there's a little magnifying glass in the upper right corner of my blog. You can search for any projects on my blog and um, those results will come up for you. So if you search for A2 gift box, Amy, you should see that gift box come up. Same style. It's just size to fit our A2 cards, which are the four and a quarter by five and a half cards. So this is same box, but resized for note cards. All right. So we've got our two pieces here. The next thing I'm going to do is fold and burnish on all the score lines. And the note cards and envelopes are great because you get the 20, right? You get the 20. They're already cut and scored for you. And then you can just buy one pack of those and you can actually have enough for two gift boxes. So you can just do 10 and 10. Now, obviously, if you add extra layers or embellishments, you're probably going to have a little bit more of a challenge fitting 10 in there. So that's why I kept my note cards very clean and simple with only the one layer of designer series paper. But I think you could add some car a cardstock layer to it as well and they should fit. All right, so we've got both of those um, folded and burnished. Let's start with the base. Bring that template in. The base is the bigger piece. So here is the template. Basically what we're gonna do, and I've got an eyelash in my eye, I can feel it. It's been in there all day today. Um, I'm gonna cut up each of the vertical score lines, stopping at the second horizontal score line. So I'm gonna do all four of those at once. I'm cutting right down the middle of the score line, or I should say right up the middle. So we've got those sort of released there. I'm going to turn it a quarter of a turn and we're going to remove these two corner squares. And I'm also coming in and miter cutting. When I say miter cut, I'm doing just a little bit of an angled cut there. So we remove those two and then we're going to remove one square from this section. Basically that's leaving behind a tab so that we can glue our box together. Okay, so we remove the three corner squares. Then I'm going to come in, I'm folding that big section up, and I'm going to miter cut on the tab here. And we'll repeat the same thing on the opposite corner. These are Paper Snips Crystal from Stampin' Up! And actually, they've been on back order since early July, and they're back in stock finally. But they're $10 scissors. I have never had to replace a pair of these. Really easy to clean with just an alcohol pad. I buy the little individual packs to get my uh, adhesive gunk off of them, but I love, love, love using them. Then I'm gonna turn it a quarter of a turn, and again, we're gonna remove those two squares and the angle cut there. Remove the one square from this tab. Then I'll fold that out of the way. Angle cut or miter cut the tab here. And then I also like to angle cut this section right here because that's a piece that's going to fold into the box. Basically, any pieces of cardstock that fold into the box, I like to miter cut. Okay, get my mess cleaned up. Now we're going to repeat the same thing on the other side. Oh, good viney. Oh, one of my customers was waiting since July 6th, which is just crazy, but worth the wait. I don't have to sharpen them, Carla. As long as I keep them clean, um, they I haven't had to sharpen them at all. And I do a lot of cutting, as you all know. <laughs> all right, we're repeating the same steps on the opposite side. So just cut up those vertical score lines. Stop at the second horizontal score line. And again, I'm cutting right up the middle of that score line. I'm gonna remove the two squares on the corner. And then the one square on that inside section. 
fold this guy out of the way. I always do these things in different orders, I think. <laughs> it's whatever I feel like, right? Then turn it a quarter of a turn, remove these two guys. We're going to be doing the exact same steps for the lid, but you'll notice that the lid looks just a little bit different, and that makes sure that the lid um, fits really nicely over the box space. Again, just coming in and doing my miter cuts. And then I like to miter cut on this section as well. All right, so not that it really matters which direction, but <laughs> there is our box base with the template. Now this project is gonna post to my blog with a video tutorial on Friday, pictures of the templates, the measurements, the supplies, all that good stuff. Now we can start to put this base together. Um, I'm gonna start by using tear and tape and I'm gonna run it, I like to use my ruler for this part. I'm gonna run it right along the top edge of these outside sections and you could use a credit card for this but since I'm going to be since I love my ruler <laughs> I'm just turning it a quarter of a turn and again putting tear and tape right up to the edge of these outside sections I haven't done this very often so I feel really awkward doing it <laughs> tearing it with the uh the ruler I need more practice. All right, so there's that. Make sure you kind of press that backing down. And then I'm gonna use the take your pick tool. And at this point, I'm just gonna take the backing off because it's so much easier to take it off now than after we start to glue the tabs. But if you get tired of sticking to the tear and tape, you can wait, just makes it a little bit more difficult to do. All right, liquid glue. Now we're gonna come, I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna start with one tab at a time, liquid glue on the tab. And we're gonna line up this score line with this cut edge to form our first box corner. And again, you're gonna stick to that tear and tape a bit. But we just want to make sure that that's lined up really nicely and then just work your way around the remaining three corners. I like liquid glue for this because you can slide things right into place. You get more than one chance with the liquid glue. Plus, personally, I feel like it holds together better. But I know everybody has their adhesive preference, right? All right, and then the last corner. The last corner is always the hardest. Tuck that guy in. All right, now what we can do, I like to start with the longer edges first because those aren't folding over any of the tabs, but we're just gonna fold those right into the box. Easy peasy. And then we'll fold these guys down and that they're gonna resist just a little bit, but that's only because it's folding over the tabs. And then what I like to do is come in with my bone folder and just burnish everything into place. Give that a nice crisp edge. And we're really burnishing the tear and tape down into place. You could use liquid glue for this, but tear and tape is quick and easy. All right, so we've got that box base with that great reinforced edge. I love that. So we're going to put that off to the side. Let's work on the lid. So same um, pattern here, just a little bit different. So instead of the base being one inch deep, the lid is going to be five eighths of an inch deep. And that gives you that really nice, um, well, you don't have to add any finger notches to lift off the lid. So... Um, just a really great proportion there. 
All right, so with this one, we're gonna do the same thing, cutting up each, I have it in portrait, I'm gonna cut up each of the vertical score lines stopping at the first horizontal or the second horizontal score line. Go ahead and do that. And same pattern, we're gonna be removing these three squares in the corner, so remove these two sections Coming in miter cut. You guys are going to be pros at this. Um, I love these kinds of boxes. Miter cut the tab. Great for gifts, and especially if you have a lot of designer series paper and cardstock in your stash, would be a great gift to give to someone while we all have some level of fear around are we going to be able to get Christmas gifts in time, right? Like everybody's starting their uh, Christmas lists much earlier this year. All right, so we've done those two corners and then I'm gonna miter cut on this section here. Of course, Amazon sent the Amazon, what's it called, the Amazon toy guide um, a couple of weeks ago and the kids have been pouring over it. But then of course, Brian went in to try to start their list and a bunch of the stuff was not available, right? Too popular. So we're going to repeat the same thing on the opposite side, cutting up each of the vertical score lines. This would also be really great for thank you notes as well. All right, I'm going to go ahead and remove the two on the outside. And then just the one, leaving behind a tab. Miter cut the tab. Then repeat the same thing on the opposite side. And then we're going to miter cut right on this section here. Go over the size. The um, finish size. For, for what, what it fits. Oh, it fits um, like what's inside the box. So this fits our three and a half by five note cards and envelopes. The finished size of the box is actually three and three quarters by five and a quarter by one inch. Okay. And that gives enough room for the cards and the envelopes. And I do have an A2 sized version of the same box as well. And you can find that at thepaperpixie.com. Man, I'm making a mess. All right, so that one's done, okay? Now, before we start to put together the box, I'm gonna do my paper layers. So I've got basic white that measures three and a half by five. That's like the size of the note card. I have shaded spruce that's three and three eighths by four and seven eighths. And then the, always forget the name of the paper. I don't know, hold on. <laughs> the painted Christmas designer series paper, three and a quarter by four and three quarters. We're just going to layer those three together, starting with the smallest one. And this paper is a little bit directional. So you'll want the three and a quarter by four and three quarters to be in portrait. Well, if that's the uh, orientation, you're going to have the box. You can have the box in any orientation you want. I suppose it depends on what orientation you choose to make your cards. And these are all just about, um, well, they're an eighth of an inch difference from each other. So then you get a 16th of an inch of the layers peeking behind. We can be messy with the glue because nobody gets to see that part. I love that little pop of white that layer of white on a bold color, like real red. And then this will just center in this large section on the lid. Ooh, almost dropped that. That would have been a mess. Oh, 
All right. Now I'm going to take tear and tape, flipping this over to the back, and we're going to do the same thing. I'm not messing with the ruler this time. <laughs> Let's just use the old, good old-fashioned nails there. Same thing, lining up the tear and tape right up to that cut edge or to the edge. All right, burnish those backings and then take your pick tool and just peel them off now. All right, so grabbing liquid glue, we're gonna do one tab at a time. I have two glue bottles here and I think I just grabbed a different one. <laughs> Put liquid glue on the tab. Oh yeah, this one's oozing out. We're gonna line up the score line with the cut edge. And start to form that first corner. Then just keep working your way around as the glue is oozing out of my glue bottle. And you can just slide that right into place. Izzy, our seven, she's 17, right? I think it's, she's 17, 2006. Yeah. Our 17-year-old cat is going for her very first grooming appointment on Monday, so I'll have to tell you about it next week. <laughs> She's um, gotten to the point where she can't clean herself. Does the size of the tape matter? I don't think it matters at all, Katie, as long as it's not wider than 5 eighths, because otherwise it won't fit. But yeah, no, it doesn't matter. It's just, I like having it right up to that edge because then when we fold these down, they're going to stay into place. All right, so folding down the long edges first and then the short edges. Those will fold over the tabs. So again, just a little bit of resistance there. And then take the bone folder and burnish. All right, so there is the lid. Oh boy, the moment of truth. Did we cut our cardstock right? Yay, we did. Perfect fit. So you'll see that it's just snug enough, but it goes on and off very easily. So that's the box. We can do a little bit of decoration on the front, and I've actually done that ahead of time to make sure that we don't run out of time tonight. So I had stamped using the Christmas to remember stamp set. And I did the sentiment, may this be a Christmas to remember and cherish. And then I die cut it using the seasonal labels dies. So that's um, heat embossed in white on shaded spruce. And then I also die cut this piece from the seasonal labels in real red. Um, you know, it's funny. Our next door neighbor, Gail, is, well, we thought she was just a dog groomer. We love her, Riley. Um, she just took our doggies um, for their six-week hairdos um, Monday. And I was telling her how our cat is just not, you know, she's got mats and things. It happens. I asked the vet. The vet said it's normal for that age. She goes, you know, I do take care of cats, too. I'm like, you do? I'm like, can I bring her to you? So, yeah, she's probably going to get shaved. So I may need to take a before and after photo, but I think she'll be way more comfortable. And then they kind of stop um, uh, scratching with their nails. They need help with their nails as well. All these things that I didn't. This is the first cat that I've had that's lived this long. So, all right. So I just layered these two pieces using liquid glue. So you get a little bit of the real red piece sticking out. I think most groomers, Gail, um, also take care of cats. They're usually really quick with cats. 
Riley said it takes her only about 30 minutes. So our golden retriever, I have no idea how long it takes to give her a grooming appointment because she's got big voluminous hair. She's gorgeous. So just a little bit of the real red peeking out from behind. And then I'm going to grab some dimensionals. Let's see. We'll do five. I love me some dimensionals. Real clean and simple on the front, but you can get real fancy with these um, bundles in the whatever it's called. I'm so bad with names, y'all. The Painted Christmas Suite. So I'm going to bring that down just a little bit towards the bottom. Centered left and right, but bring it down a little bit. And then I'm going to grab linen thread. I'm going to double it up. So I'm just kind of folding it in half, totally eyeballing this. And then... She need to go nine nights. <laughs> you can tell her. You won't be too loud. <laughs> Lily's reading her book, and it's such a good book. She can't put it down, and it's time for her to go to bed. All right, so I just have two pieces of linen thread that are probably, I don't know, six to eight, probably eight inches or so. I'm just going to do the bunny ears trick here. So two loop-de-loops. Oh, see, I'm I'm live streaming, so this is going to give me a hard time. And then I just loop. Ah, these are too small. Let's see. <laughs> it doesn't help that I have lotion on my hands. All right, so bunny ears loops. Loop over loop. Pull it through, and then I release the left, so it kind of flips over. And then I just tug and pull and zhuzh and make it look pretty. I do have a bow tying video somewhere on my YouTube channel with four or five ways to tie a bow. And this is one of them. So really cute with the double loops. And then I'm just going to trim the tails a bit. And then I'm just going to stick a glue dot to the back of the knot. And then I'm going to show you how to make or how easy it is to make the note cards, especially if you have a stamparatus. How are we doing? And I'm just going to put that right off to the lower left. I love that neutral paired with this beautiful painted Christmas designer series paper. That li That's the linen thread, one of my favorite staples. And we got the beautiful white heat embossed sentiment, the pops of green and red, and then this awesome double reinforced note card gift box. It flips the, it flips the left loop. Was that Carla? I think it was Carla. It flips the left loop, and so it stays more of a square knot for some reason. Um, I don't remember if I picked that up on another video tutorial, um, but it's really it works really, really well. And then you can see the loops are not all twisted or wonky, so works really well. All right, let's go ahead and make our quick and easy note card. All it takes is one of the note cards and then a 3 by 3 inch piece of designer series paper. So from a sheet of 12 by 12, you will actually get 16 squares, which is awesome. So let me show you how easy it is to cut this without making any tick marks. I love this tip. Bring in your paper trimmer. And if you've got a directional pattern, I think it goes this way because the pine bows are going that way. I'm going to open my whatever this is called, the guide. And then I'm going to start to turn it to the left. Okay, so this is top to bottom with a directional paper. Turning it to the left. So we're going to be sort of on a diagonal here. I'm going to line up the top right corner at the one inch on the left. And then the bottom left corner at the one inch on the right. So I like to line up one of them. Now it happens to be the fourth line over. So I'm lining up the bottom left corner at the one inch on the right. I hold my finger there and then pivot. And that top right corner, I line up at one inch. I hope that you can see that. Let me zoom in a bit. So can you see that bottom corner is the fourth line over and that top corner is the fourth line over. So fourth line to the right, fourth line to the left, and then we're just gonna cut, boom. And then you've got these two pieces that when you spread them apart, whoop, wrong way. 
you can line them up on the front of the note card. Project up. Oh, Brian is putting the A2 project link in the comments. I will also link to it in my blog post because they're, they're um, very similar. All right, so it's just going to go like that. And then you've got that section in the middle for a sentiment. Now, I opted to go with designer series paper with a white background for this subtle pattern, but you could really pick any of the, pa the papers in this um, designer series paper pack. But I'm going to wait. I want to stamp the sentiment first. And here is my tip for this. If you're going to be making a lot of these maybe for a craft fair or for gifts for your family, I recommend you set it up on the Stamparatus. So I did that ahead of time. And a couple of tips with this. I actually have the old stamp. Oh, there's a question. You can mail note cards, Gail. Um, it fits. It's, I believe that is the minimum size that you can mail with a normal first class um, postage stamp. So yeah, three and a half by five meets the requirements of the U.S. mail. I know they're pretty strict about that stuff, but yes, these can be mailed. Um, so the clear sheet from the Stampamajig, do you guys remember that amazing tool? If you happen to have that in your stash, you could use that. I like to use those to put here first and then stamp it down. And then I can bring my card behind the Stampamajig sheet and take a look at the positioning of it or make yourself something like it from the window sheets. Those can be rinsed off, especially if you're using our uh, water-based ink. Uh, you can rinse off that window sheet and use it over and over and over again. The DSP square was three by three. So you can get a lot of them out of a sheet of 12 by 12, 16 out of a sheet of 12 by 12. So I actually have a bunch of packs of note cards and envelopes. So I actually folded them all already, but I would recommend don't fold and burnish it yet. Um, it just gives you more of a flat surface. So I'm just going to open that, throw my little magnet down. I've got duct tape on here to help me pick it up really easily. And then I had already positioned the stamp on the angle. You want to do that set up ahead of time with the window sheet or the stamp -a -jig sheet and make sure you get it lined up. And then you're going to be ready to go to make a whole bunch of these note cards. So sh um, shaded spruce. I don't know what I was going to call that. Something. Lily um, put together her October paper pumpkin kit this week, and she uses my big ink pads for it. And you can tell, because look at all the ink on it. <laughs> oh, but you know what? I love everything about it. She loves doing her paper pumpkin. If you have grandkids around Lily's age, um, they would love paper pumpkins. So she's eight, and she she's made enough of them. She just she opens the box on her own. She's like, I need to get a shaded spruce ink pad. And she walks in here and just knows where to get it. It's awesome. So makes my heart happy. So I have both of my uh, magnets covered in duct tape, mostly to grab them, but also in case they bang together. I feel like it might kind of protect them, but try not to have them bang together because they will shatter. How many cards did they do? You can, it's the same. Um, it's the same depth, so you can still fit 10 cards and 10 envelopes in that one, assuming you've got not a lot of layers. It's the same. Um, I can't remember the height and the width, but it is the one inch depth. And it's also got the five eighths. Of it. it looks very similar to this, just a little bit bigger in scale. So now I have too many glue bottles. <laughs> now I can go ahead and glue these down. Now remember, the way I showed you to cut the angle makes a difference on which angle you set up your stamp set, right? So if you've got it in your top to bottom, you want to turn it counterclockwise before you do your diagonal cut. But talk about quick and easy. How did I do? Which part, Michelle? Tell me more. <laughs> I'm not sure if you're asking about the stamp or the designer series paper. Sorry, Brian, now you have to watch out for Michelle, okay? <laughs> and if you have any raised edges from cutting with the paper trimmer, just come in with your bone folder and smooth those down. Sometimes that happens if you press too hard on the paper trimmer. The alignment, the alignment oh, from the, um, with the stamp set? 
that alignment, I'm assuming. Um, so I actually had um, a sample card that I was working on and I put the designer series paper down first. So let's see if I can explain that. It does take a little bit of trial and error, but use either your grid paper or a window sheet and kind of practice. I'm going to flip it this way because it's just in case that ink is still wet. So I basically, um, what you can do is take some stamp and seal and stick your finger on it. Or um, if you've got the embossing buddy or some type of powder tool, just to get the paper to sit down kind of where you want it. And then I positioned the red rubber stamp on an angle, pulled out the card, stamped it like on a window sheet or the stamp of a jig sheet, and then brought the card back in to see if I needed to adjust the angle at all. And then I probably tried it another time before I got it right. But then once it's set, it's always going to stamp in the same position every single time. So. Yes, if you have a tutorial on the stamp of a jig. I do not have a stamp of a jig tutorial specifically, but thank you for the recommendation. I will add that to my list of possible future tutorials. So that's the card. I'm just going to burnish that one more time so that stays closed. And then we're going to beg, borrow, or steal. This is the box we made tonight. And I just want to show you. We'll leave that guy out. So we've got 10 envelopes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I don't know if you noticed, but I just staggered them. So you see I've got five with the envelope flap going on the left and five on the right, just to kind of balance out the thickness there, maximize your space. And then the same thing, we've got five and five, but I have some upside down and some right side up. One, two, three, four, five. Just because with that spine there, they just lay much nicer, nicer. But see, even that, we've got a little bit more space in there. So that's why I say, I think you can probably add some more layers of cardstock. I wouldn't do um, embellishments probably because that's going to add to the thickness, but you also don't have to put 10 in the box. You could do like a set of six, for example, if you wanted them to be really fancy and embellished. So that is tonight's project, our note card gift box with a set of really quick and easy, clean and simple note cards. I love this stamp set paired with that designer series paper to make a really great set of cards. Now what you could do is create a whole set with different sentiments. You could play around with the dimensions of your um, designer series paper. For example, if you wanted this gap in the middle to be narrower, you would just make your piece of paper taller than three inches and you could put like the Merry Christmas or Season's Greetings on an angle down the center. So lots of options there. So that's the box. All right. You know what time it is. It is time for prize patrol. So let me go ahead and pull up really quickly. This is my way to give back to my live viewer audience. Where am I at? <laughs> Here we go. All right. So prize patrol. All you have to do to be entered for a chance to win is U.S. residents only because I only send product within the U.S. Hashtag prize patrol. Make sure that you um, spell it correctly. No spaces. Add the hashtag. What I'm giving away tonight are um, Patty. The note cards, I believe, are thick basic white, but again, they are completely um, cut and uh, scored for you already. So they are thicker than our regular basic white. I believe the note cards are thick basic white. Um, but then the white on the lid, I just use the regular weight basic white. So the textures and frames stamp set from Celebration. This is a fantastic um, background set to have, plus a handmade card from my stash. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. Let's add that to the stream as you all start rolling on in. Let's flip so you can actually see me. And oh, oh look at you guys. We're at 277. You all are awesome. Um, a couple of reminders. Again, we're, we're, we're wrapping up the end of the month. So um, I've got in the description this month's host code. I will have information about, I believe it's called Eden's Garden. 
think that's the name of it. It's launching next week. You may have seen samples with it, or if you're a demonstrator, you've already seen it, and you may have already been playing with it because we were able to pre-order that. So that drops on November 2nd, and I think next Wednesday's live stream will be using that suite of products. And I, I think that's all I have. I'm going to choose winners. Let's get to that. <laughs> All right, let's choose winner number one. I'm drawing for the first winner. Grab my notes here. I love seeing your faces. New names and familiar names. Debbie Beck, congratulations. I will put up how you can claim Prize Patrol in just a minute. I'm going to go ahead and put that up really quickly. Debbie to claim, go to the paperpixie.com slash prize patrol. And let's go for winner number two, drum roll. Do, do, do. Linda Taylor, congratulations. New names this week. Yay, you guys. Congratulations. And thank you for joining me for a live stream. So Debbie and Linda, be sure to claim your prize patrol. I'll drop those in the mail to you with the handmade card from my stash. Let's see. Let me come back here. I'll leave it up for a minute. Stop the share. You guys are awesome. Thank you for joining me live. Thanks to those of you watching on the replay. I hope you have a wonderful and happy Halloween to those of you that celebrate. I'll have stories to share, I'm sure, from the kids' Halloween upcoming this Sunday. I will see you next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time for episode 216. I hope you all have a wonderful and blessed week. This project will post to thepaperpixie.com on Friday, and I'll see you next Wednesday. Take good care. Bye.